Welcome to your first case study assignment in the Web 115 HTML class. I wanted to go through this with you in case for the beginners that this possibly gave them some difficulties or they didn't understand the processes. You're on page 49 in chapter 2 of the yellow web design textbook. I'm assuming that you've read the chapter and that you understand some of these concepts already. I'm not starting from this is the computer because of the time constraints in making a video and in downloading it for your sake. In the case study, you're eventually going to prepare a document that looks something like this one. It's called Pacific Trails Resort. You're going to make a website that will grow and build as you go through the course. And you'll have four pages in the website, the home page, right here which we'll start on in this video and then some link pages from there that will be called yurts activities and reservations which we'll get into later basically you'll see in the book something called a wireframe sketch which is just kind of a hierarchical layout of what all the pages are and how they link with each other very sketchy I don't mean criminal sketchy <laughs> sorry very basic as far as the design is concerned and we're going to do some enhancements to it now what will happen basically and again you can take whatever approach you want to in designing this web page I make the suggestion that you look at something very simple do not go into a fancy smancy word processor like WordPerfect or Word or Works because they have a lot of codes behind the scenes that will make web page conversion very difficult I would stay with something very basic if you want something totally free look at notepad or WordPad or TextPad, TextEdit, some of those things and I made some suggestions and hopefully in the discussion board section of this course some of you will make suggestions also. What I've done ahead of time I'll see if I can find it right here is I've got just a very plain uh, uh, printout I'm not, I'm not saying this real, just a very very plain document right here and I'm going to change the font immediately at least the size so you can see what's going on with it maybe this is a little bit better now what you want to do is you want to take these, this basic text and what I suggest if you're a true beginner what I suggest that you do is first of all start out with the shell of your document and basically every HTML document that you'll write in this course will start with something like this it will start with something called the document type so that the browser will know how to render it the language being English you have something called the title and this title right here that says Pacific Trails Resort is what's going to appear in the title bar at the top of your window. For example, in this notepad title bar window, I've got something called Chapter 2 Plain, which is how I saved the plain text. That's what this title business is going is doing. You'll eventually have at the bottom of you'll you'll have a an HTML tag at the top and then one at the bottom. And in between the ones that say body and the end tag body, this is where your actual text will be. Everything you write will be right here. So what I've done initially is I've taken the text and you may want to take this approach personally if you are a true bona fide beginner to a web markup and scripting course what I would suggest that you do is, is just take the shell use this shell and copy it in every single program that you use in the whole course along with these two guys these end tags at the very end of the document and in between the body tags just type the text just literally walk in there go to the, to the book on page 50 in this case and just type in that text and then we'll fancy it up so that it will look the way it's supposed to so instead of looking like this at the end what we'll do is we'll take this text sorry this is the way Windows 7 does things we'll take this text so that once you have done the markup with it it'll look like this now the difference I'm talking about here what a markup language basically is is doing it's really not a true computer language in the nature of a Java or C++ or Visual Basic. Basically, you're doing what it says. It's a markup language. You're simply taking text and images. You're saying, okay, I want this text, Pacific Trails Resort, to go on the screen, but I want it to look big like this. I want the words home, yurts, activities, and reservations to be there, but I want it to look like this. I'm basically telling the browser what font what color what heading that kind of thing what I'm going to use here so let's start at the very beginning I'm looking right now at Pacific Trails Resort and if I'm looking at the directions step one says web page title use a descriptive page title the web page title in step number one is going to go right here in between 
the two title tags. That's where you're going to put the information that's going to appear in the colorful bar at the top of the window right next to the minimize, maximize, and close buttons. That's what step one is all about. All right, in step two it says to use the H1 tag for the Pacific Trails Resort logo. So what I'm doing right here, and again, you can space this stuff out when you're typing in Notepad. You can space this as much as you like. I'm simply taking this title right here, and I'm just surrounding it with a tag that says H1. And I go to the back of it, and I'm going to use the same tag, but I'm putting that little forward slash in. That simply tells the computer, the browser, that everything between the H1 beginning tag and the H1 ending tag is going to be big letters. And that's why Pacific Trails Resort, when it is shown, looks like that. It's because of the H1 tag that I put in there. So we've done that part. And you can space this stuff as far apart as you want to. Now, in step three, it says to place the following text, home, yurts, activities, and reservations. And again, I'm isolating this for visual purposes on the video. It says to put that inside a div. And I will talk more about this in a later video. But basically, if you want to isolate and make a particular part of a page very unique as far as its font and its emphasis and such, you'll basically use a div tag. So I'll simply go to these headings that say Home Yurts Activities Reservation. Now I'm going to type a div. I put them inside the greater than, less than symbols. And I'll put one at the very end as well. And again, this approach is what I use sometimes with beginners. I just say type all the text in Notepad, just plain Jane, just like you would in the word processor as if you were doing the paper for an English class. And then put all your tags in. Some people do it as they go along, and some people learn differently. It's just whatever style is good for you. Now, it says that we need <clears throat> to put the strong tag to put emphasis on it because we want the final appearance of it to have some bold words. Now, instead of using the word bold now, they use the word strong. And the reason for these special tags is we've got some universality with pages and browsers across the world now, and especially when we've got people who have special needs because they have visual issues like an elderly person or a person who is legally blind, a person who has hearing issues or has some physical limitations. We're doing this to make it as general as possible because everybody deserves to use the web. The internet is for everyone. All right. In order to make this particular set of words bold or strong, I want to be careful because I've already got one tag right here in the case of the div and the end div. So what I want to do is go inside the div tag and put something called strong. Now you won't see the results of any of this until you actually put it in the web browser. We're just mechanically doing it right now. And I'll put the end tag for strong as well. Most tags are paired up like this and they'll have the word and they'll have the forward slash in the word. So notice that my strong tags are completely inside the div tags. You do not want to ever have them overlap. So that will give you the <clears throat> emphasis with those words being a little bolder. Now it also says in step three to add extra blank spaces between the words with the ambersand or and symbol non-breaking space character as needed. The deal behind this spacing is I can put as much space between the word home and the word yurts and the word activity as I want to. Even if I've got that much space, a web browser, no matter how much space you see right there, a web browser will only do exactly one space. If you make, if you type the word home in Shelby and the word yurts is typed all the way in Charlotte, I don't care if they're 43 miles apart, the browser will make one space. So you have to force the browser's hand. So if you want extra space in between these words, you have to make a series of characters called ambersand, and in this case, non-breaking space, NBSP, and it's got a semicolon after it. Just a weird deal with the language that helps out. And you can put as many of these as you want to. So in this particular case, if I do two of these, I'll have two spaces between the word home and the word yurts. And I'll just do this in, in several places right here so you'll have them in between. I'm going to pull these things back together just for visual purposes where this video is concerned. Again, this is called a markup language. That's what the, the ML of HTML stands for, is hypertext markup language because I'm marking up how it looks. So you can do something along these lines and that will give you the way 
this line will look. So when you look at this in the web browser, once we actually save it and look at it, what will happen <clears throat> is you'll actually see these spaces, two physical spaces forced between the words. The strong is what's making it bold, and the div part is just saying I'm taking this little isolated part of the web page and applying these special principles, strong and non-breaking backspace, non-breaking, yeah, non-breaking backspace to it. All right, we go to step four. <clears throat> and it says place the following within an H2 element, enjoy nature and luxury. Basically, I'm taking enjoy nature and luxury, and just as I surrounded this guy with an H1, an H2 tag is slightly smaller text. Instead of using the regular font sizes that we use in a Word document, we're trying to standardize web pages, in, and, and what this does too, it makes them more readable and more available, accessible to the special needs people. And we've got to remember, we can't just make web pages. Web pages should not be made for us. They should be made for other people. We have to be unselfish about this. Not that we like a certain color or we like a certain font, but that that user of the web page needs to enjoy what we've created as well. And we have to be less self-centered about it. The H2 will cause what is surrounding, what the tags are surrounding, to be a little smaller than H1. And again, I keep wanting to make these references to the final copy. You might not see much of a difference in size in this video, but there is a slightly different size to this. <clears throat> okay? And notice also that what happens automatically when you choose H1 or div or H2, do you notice that there's an automatic space in between the almost like a double space in between each of these sets of text? That's automatic. You can make it not happen if you like. All right, so we've got the H2 set up. Now we're going to place the following content in a paragraph. Pacific Trails Resort offers a special lodging experience, blah, 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 with panoramic views of the Pacific Ocean. So we're basically taking this guy and we're putting it inside a paragraph. Now the spacing doesn't matter here. We may have a question, well, do, do we need to end with the word California and put North Coast on the next line like I'm doing here? The paragraph marker is not an issue here. I'm basically surrounding this text with a paragraph marker and uh, web software HTML I'm sorry is very free form you can have this spaced any way you like it doesn't matter whether it wraps around or not but again I'm just surrounding this with the two paragraph tags pause the video often as you need to in order to better understand what's going on take your time replay as you need to do it all right that's surrounded inside a paragraph marker now a paragraph marker or a paragraph tag, just like with the H1, H2, and the div, will always allow the space in front and after it. So again, you see how this has been isolated. Okay, now we're running across a list right here, a bulleted list starting with the word private yurts, activities, etc. To get that, and I'm now referring to step 4C, place the following content in an unordered list. What makes it unordered? is that it has bullets. If it were an ordered list, it would have numbers like 1, 2, 3, or A, B, C. So I'm taking these guys right here, these five items, and making that bullets. Again, remember, you're not in a word processor, so we're not physically typing the bullets. We're telling a browser how to use this, and that's why all this language has to be around it. So what we need to do first, in order to make this a list, we have to surround these guys. Now I'm going to make this a little bit higher on the screen, just in case... Camtasia is my software I'm using to make this doesn't work very well. So I'm going to close some of this stuff up so I can make this just a little bit higher on the screen for you just to be on the safe side. I hope I am anyway. Alright, I'm taking these guys right here and I'm going to put a tag in front of it that is called UL for unordered list. And at the end of the list I'll put the closing tag for unordered list. So there are my guys right there that I'm using. Now, it is required that each list item, because you want to get the bullets there, you've got to put the LI in front of every one of these that you want to use. And I'm going to use a copy and paste just to make this a little faster, <clears throat> pardon me, where the video is concerned. Every one of these has to have a list tag beside of it. And again, you can leave this right up against each other. You can space them apart. It's whatever works for you best. I'm spacing because I want this to be as neat as possible 
where you are concerned with the video. I'll put the end tag for each of these bulleted list items as well. As well. And again, I'm, I love copy-paste. I hope you do. I feel like I'm doing a cooking show in a way because I'm doing this as I go along and showing you the results of it. Again, you don't have to be a neat freak like I'm being here at the video, but I'm trying to make this as organized as I can for you. So here's your big unordered list, and that will give you the bullets that you're seeing right here. And each the, the way that, they, that it knows to line feed after the word ocean, after the word shop, is that I put each of these bulleted items with a list tag and a closing list tag at the end of each one. Now you can do some fancy stuff with you can make the bullet <clears throat> a square instead of a circle just by adding some some little, little extras in it. And I'm just going to keep this very basic for right now and show you how to do this if you need it individually at a later date. All right. In Part D, we're looking at the contact information. Place the address and phone number information within a div below the ordered list. Use line break tags as needed. So I'm putting this information right here inside a div. Again, a div tag is just to have some special for it's kind of like a special person, kind of country clubbish, I guess. It's a special format that you're applying to a particular set of data or text in this case in a website. So I've surrounded all this stuff right here with the div. Now, what will happen in a browser, it will automatically, even though you see it like this, what will happen in a browser, if you don't physically force the computer to put those spaces in there, what's going to happen is all this stuff is going to run together. Whoops, sorry about that. It's going to automatically run together like this, no matter what it looks like in Notepad. Again, you got to remember, this is not a word processor. So it's going to start running together like this. So in order to keep this from happening, you have to physically force a browser to do this correctly. It won't do it automatically. You have to force its hand on it. I don't know where that non-breaking space came in. I don't need that puppy at all. All right, so if you want this stuff to physically be separated on the screen, and again, this will fool you with an HTML document. If you physically want the space, or the break rather, the line break after resort, and notice how the spacing is not big with the bullets, the list items, or with this div thing. If you want the space after the word resort, after the word road, etc., you physically have to tell this markup language to do that, so you have to put in a break tag. Now, this is one of the tags, one of the few in the language that doesn't have a matching end tag. They don't pair up like the ones we've done earlier. So if I want the break in there, I put it like so. And let's say I want to, let's suppose I want to have two lines separating the zip code and the phone number. I have to put break twice. Now, again, you're looking at a word processing pro well, it's a text editor right here, actually. And you'll see some something a little differently. Let's say you want to break after the 555 number. Maybe you want a couple of lines. You have to physically put it in place. And that's what they meant in the directions by saying use the break tags as needed. All right? Now, the footer, the very last part, and again, I sure hope you can see this in the video right now. What I'm going to do temporarily, just in case this video goes quirky on me, I'm going to temporarily delete this stuff so I can pull the copyright up here to the top so you can see it. Now, the copyright is going to be something very unique also. This is step five, and it says to configure the copyright and email address within a div. So again, that part is a pretty easy fix. So I'll just put the div tag and have this surround each part. I know in a way I'm doing this for you, but at the same time I want to make sure you understand it. And so I want this to be a guide. You'll be creative as you need to. All right, so we've got this inside a div. Now, now we want to format this because if you'll notice in the final result, the copyright looks like it has italics. It may be a little bit smaller in size. Again, I've magnified it on here because of the video, so you can not have to look at something tiny. Now, it says in the directions to configure small text size and italics font for the copyright information. So again, to do that, I want to surround everything with small. That makes the font smaller. So basically what I'm going to do right here, and again, I'm doing it very free form, and it's perfectly legal. I'm surrounding everything right here with small. I hope you can see this on the video. I'm just praying this works. 
All right, so that's going to make the font smaller. Now to make it italics, I want to also put italics in there. Now you could put the small first and the italics second, or vice versa. You just want to make sure that the tags do not overlap each other. For example, this would be incorrect because notice this one says um, small i and small i. What happens here, the tags are overlapping each other. I've got to make sure that the italics in this particular case is on the inside. I want the tags to always be enclosed inside each other. So here's the italics tag. That whole thing is enclosed in the small tags and that whole thing is enclosed in the div tag. So you want to make sure your order <coughs> is correct right here. That takes care of the div and the small and the italics part. Now a couple of other things you need to watch out for right here <coughs> excuse me, is notice that in this display that the word resort is at the end of the line and then the email address starts on a new line. Again remember that even though this is the word processor or, or text editor we're using you have to force the new lines. So after resort, I would have to put one of those break characters to force the next word, namely your first name, to go on the separate line. So that takes care of that line break. And to get the actual copyright symbol, remember when we had earlier the special non-breaking character with the little ampersand or the and symbol in front of it? If you look on page 42, you've got the same situation with the copyright. So if you want that little C to be there, notice that in the final display that the C is here but it's not in our text. To put that in there I have to put that little ampersand, the little and symbol, the word copy and the semicolon. This is referenced for you on page 42 of your book. So that will give you, and hopefully it's going to work for me, this will give you the entire web page or uh, design for it. I'm sort of stammering trying to do this and race the clock to get out of here before security runs me out all at the same time. So I'll show you the final result of the chapter 2 document so you can, can see this. I'll make this font just a little bit bigger so you can see everything. <clears throat> so there's your document. Inside the body is your text. I've got Pacific Trails Resort with the H1. I've got the div tags surrounding these headings, home yurts, activities, and reservation. You'll notice that the strong is for the emphasis with the, with the bold, the non-breaking space forces the two spaces between the words. Heading 2 for enjoy nature and luxury. The Pacific Trails is in a paragraph. There's your list with the bullets. Here's your div that has the name and address and phone number, and I've got the breaks in there to force the computer to go to the next line in the browser. And then finally, in this last div, we have the copyright with the small letters, the italics, and then the copyright symbol. I know I've almost done this for you, but I hope the video will help you because I want you to have a very good start with this course. And one way to do that is to have the strongest foundation possible when you're doing this. Now what happens when you save this document? You've got to be careful right here when you save it. Because when you go to a, a text editor like Notepad, when you just save as, the default is going to say TXT. It is extremely important that when you save this, and I'm going to write this, and I'm going to save it as Mike Chapter 2, it's very important that you put .htm after it, HTML, hypertext markup language, after it. If this doesn't work for you, you can put quotation marks around it and force the computer to do it. If it's saved as a text file or if you've got anything with TXT there, it's going to be a problem. Another thing you want to watch out for, folks, don't get crazy about the periods. I've had people trying to do this with neatness. They'll write Mike dot chapter dot two dot and what happens, the computer gets confused because the dot for a computer file name separates the file name from the extension. For example, the extension HTML says hey, computer, this is a document to put on a browser like Internet Explorer. If it ends in dot doc, it says, hey, that's a word processing document. Dot XLS or SLXSX is for, for a spreadsheet. If you put too many dots in your name, the computer becomes very confused and doesn't understand what kind of document you have. So make sure that it ends with dot HTML so when you save it and make sure you know where it's going, the desktop, the hard drive, the flash drive, wherever it is, and when you save it, that name will appear at the top. That will be the file that you send to me. And what will happen 
is when I open this up, I'm trying to close all this stuff right now. What will happen when I open up Mike Chapter 2, it will look like this. And I can view the source code by going to, in the Internet Explorer anyway, going to, going to Page and choosing View Source. And it will show me the list <clears throat> of statements that I've made. And that's what I'm looking for. As far as how you submit it to me at this stage, later on we'll have to do something called a zipped folder. But for right now, you'll be okay by just going into Blackboard. And I'll go to Blackboard right now. And I'm going to do a little pause so you won't have to. I'm going to log in as the fake student in the class that I've got called Student C so I can simulate what I want to do with you guys. And Student C is enrolled in lots of courses as some of you are as well. I'm going to the Web 115 course. I'll go to Homework Tests. This particular assignment is called the Case Study. I'm going to click that. And what you will do is go in. It's like I tell people it's like strapping a baby to a car seat and driving off. This is your car to strap the baby to the seat to attach the file for me you go to attach file browse the computer and where yours is I don't know mine happens to be on the desktop and it says Mike chapter 2 now it looks like H it looks like an internet explorer document that's because it's a web page HTML so that's what I'm gonna click Mike chapter 2 I click open there it is right there and that's what you'll submit to me what will happen on my end when I get it is that I will download it I'll open it up in a browser and see if the page shows up. Hopefully this video, and I'm not going to have you go through the time of watching this submit because it, the little green bar at the bottom is just saying this is processing and Blackboard's going rather slowly at this taping. Hopefully this video will help you out. If you have additional questions, it may serve a purpose that maybe you need to sit down with me one-on-one, -on -one, side by side, face to face because everybody learns differently. Communicate with me, especially in an online class because I can't help you if I don't know that you're in need of help. Thank you very much.